During the school year, we have a daily routine. By the time I drag myself out of bed and lumber to the bathroom, Hassan has already washed up. He prays the morning namaz with Ali, prepares my breakfast. While I eat and complain about my homework, Hassan makes my bed, polishes my shoes, irons my outfit for the day, packs my books and pencils. I hear him singing to himself in the foyer as he irons, singing old Hazara songs in his nasal voice. Then Baba and I drive off in his black Ford Mustang. After school, Hassan and I meet up. We grab a book, trot up a bowl-shaped hill just north of my father's property in Wazir Akbar Khan. I read to him stories he cannot read for himself. Hassan is drawn to the mystery of words, seduced by the secret world forbidden to him. Today, July 1973, I play a trick on Hassan. I am reading to him and suddenly, I stray from the written story. I pretend I am reading from the book, flipping pages regularly, but I have abandoned the text, taken over the story, make up my own. Hassan, of course, has no idea. When I ask him if he likes the story, Hassan begins to clap. <laughs> what are you doing? That is the best story you've read me in a long time. Really? Really? This story is special. I wrote it myself. Wow! Someday, inshallah, you will be a great writer and people all over the world will read your stories. You will be great and famous. <laughs> you want to go climb our tree, Amiraga? We burst through the front gate, head for the hill. Suddenly, a rock strikes Hassan in the back. We whirl around. My heart drops. Asif and two of his friends Wali and Kamal are approaching us. Asif is the son of one of my father's friends, born to a German mother and an Afghan father, the blonde, blue-eyed Asif. He towers over the other kids who know about his famous stainless steel brass knuckles. Flanked by his obeying friends, Asif walks the neighborhood like a Khan strolling through his lands with his eager to please entourage. His word is law. And if you need a little legal education, then those brass knuckles are just the right teaching tool. I saw him use those brass knuckles once on a kid from the Karte Char district. I'll never forget how his blue eyes glinted and how he grinned as he pummeled that poor kid unconscious. The other boys have nicknamed him Asif Goshkor, which means Asif the ear eater. Of course, none of them dare utter it to his face unless they wish to suffer the same fate as that poor kid who unwittingly inspired that nickname when he fought Asif over a kite and ended up fishing his right ear from the muddy gutter. Good morning, Kunis! Faggots! Hassan retreats behind me as the three older boys close in. Towering over us all, Asif crosses his thick arms on his chest, a savage sort of grin on his lips. It occurs to me that Asif might not be entirely sane. It also occurs to me how lucky I am to have Baba as my father. The sole reason I believe Asif has mostly refrained from harassing me too much. Hey! Flat nose! How's Babalu? <laughs> Hassan says nothing, creeps another step behind me. Have you heard the news, boys? The king is gone, good riddance. Long live the president. My father knows Dawood Khan. Do you know him, Amir? So does my father. Well, Dawood Khan dined at our house last year. How do you like that, Amir? You know what I will tell Daud Khan the next time he comes to my house for dinner? I'll have a little chat with him, man to man, mard se mard. I'll tell him what I told my mother about Hitler. Now there was a leader, a great leader, a man with a vision. I'll tell Daud Khan to remember that if they had let Hitler finish what he had started, this world would be a better place now. B B Baba says Hitler was crazy, that he ordered a lot of innocent people killed. Well, he sounds like my mother. She's German. She should know better. But then that's what they want you to believe, don't they? Hmm? They don't want you to know the truth. You have to read books they don't give out in school. I have. 
And now my eyes have been opened. Now I have a vision and I'm going to share it with a new president. Afghanistan is the land of the Pashtuns. Always has been, always will be. We are the true Afghans, the pure Afghans. Not that flat nose there. His people pollute our homeland, our watan. They dirty our blood. Afghanistan is for Pashtuns. That's my vision. Too late for Hitler, but not for us. I'll ask the president to do what the king didn't have the what to do, to rid Afghanistan of all these dirty kasif hazaras. Let us go, Asif. We are not bothering you. You are bothering me. And I see with sinking heart that he's slipping on his brass knuckles. You are bothering me very much. In fact, you bother me more than that Hazara there. How can you talk to him, play with him? Let him touch you. How can you be his friend? You're part of the problem, Amir. If idiots like you and your father didn't take these people in, we'd be rid of them by now. They'd all just go rot in Hazara Jad where they belong. You're a disgrace to Afghanistan. I look into his crazy eyes and I see that he means it. He really means to hurt me. Asif raises his fist and comes for me. There is a flurry of rapid movement behind me. Out of the corner of my eye, I see Hassan bend down and stand up quickly. Asif's eyes flick to something behind and widen with surprise. I see the same look of astonishment on Wali and Kamal's faces as they too have seen what's happened behind. So I turn and come face to face with Hassan's slingshot. Hassan has pulled the wide elastic band all the way back. In the cup is a rock the size of a walnut. Hassan holds that slingshot pointed directly at Asif's face. His hand, it trembles with the strain of the pulled elastic band and beads of sweat have appeared on his brow. Put it down, you motherless Hazara. I have this rock pointed at your left eye. If you make a move, they'll have to change your nickname from Asif the Ear Eater to One-Eyed Asif. Asif looks from the rock to Hassan. He searches Hassan's face intently and what he finds in it must convince him of the seriousness of Hassan's intentions because he lowers his fist. You should know something about me, Hazara. I'm a very patient person. This doesn't end today, believe you me. This isn't the end for you either, Amir. Someday I'll make you face me one on one. Your Hazara made a big mistake today, Amir. Big mistake. They turn around, walk away. We watch them walk down the hill and disappear behind a wall. <laughs>